Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. This is another uh, edition of the Red Pill Religion podcast here on the Dean Esme channel. My name is Max, and I would like you to know that here on Red Pill Religion, you do not have to be religious. That doesn't mean you can't get along with and work with religious people and support religious people. So support our work on redpillreligion.com, where we talk to anybody of just about any religion who's not hostile and nasty. Uh, tonight, we will be talking about a live stream I recently did with King Crocoduck. But before I do, I will remind everybody to please find us on Maker Support. We could use your spiritual and, fi and your financial support there. You'll also find us on at Red Pill Religion uh, uh, on Gab. But please come say us there. We're getting more active on that. Also, please see our website, Red Pill. Uh, oops, wrong link. That's a good movie, but wrong link. I need a Red Pill Religion. Um, which is uh, where you can find our PayPal and Bitcoin uh, and maker support donation links, or just find us at uh, maker support. And uh, so in any case, coming back to this, uh, I had a conversation last night on the non sequitur show. Uh, today, this evening, just before we went live, I spotted something there that uh, uh, I, I think the non sequitur show guys um, pulled a minor fast one. I don't mind too much, but I will talk to them about it because it gave a number of people uh, on the team or who are supporters, uh, I think, some confusion because a lot of people um, were saying, you did not prepare enough for this debate. You didn't do that well in that debate. And uh, the show was pitched to me and was originally titled, as I remember it, as this was a casual conversation between and a relaxed conversation between me and Crocoduck and the people on the non sequitur show. So I, in fact, did show up quite relaxed. And I wasn't told that we were going to be doing anything but except talking about whether or not there's a place for faith. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm not accusing anybody of a bait and switch, although it does seem like Crocoduck was armed with something else for something else. Um, not that I matter or anything, but really, I was just in there to have discuss my point of view. And uh, my only goal in there was to point things out that I see wrong in the skeptical, uh, in the so-called skeptic worldview, which isn't really that uh, rooted in honest skepticism. It's more of an ideology. And I just wanted to point things out about science, the supernatural, and of course, the faith basis of science, because science is a faith-based endeavor. And I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know that Crocoduck was, was, was that prepared because uh, he, in my view, uh, he was a pleasant enough fellow. Um, I, I found some of his arguments and claims rather unconvincing, but uh, he, he's pleasant and, and, and did, you know, he, he, unlike most people I encounter in atheist land, he actually does understand uh, more about science than the average person. I think he has a, I think he has a PhD in physics. Um, which does tend to impress some people. It doesn't impress me that much. It means he has some moderate achievements in, 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 in one field of inquiry in science. Um, and I don't disrespect it. On the other hand, I've known a number of physicists. And so they don't intimidate me either because if physicists often make assertions they can't back up, um, just like anybody else might. And as I went through that entire conversation, Really, I, I, he may have found it irritating. I, I didn't, but I mean, I just kept trying to pin him down on his beliefs and his definitions. Um, and my only actual goal was to start those as conversation starters and have the audience claim them. Like, I mean, truly, I think I lost it when early in the game, and a few of you criticized me for it when I got irritated with him, but when I simply stated that there's a widespread problem with discrimination against Christians and the sciences, which is well known and attested to by numerous sources. He tried to start it to tell me to prove that that was true at all. I had to construct a study or he wouldn't believe it. Of course, this got me irritated and it got me irritated on a couple of levels. I'm not kind of picking on him. We're just doing a post debate discussion here. It annoyed me because it's like I, I, I run into constantly. That's not true unless you present me with a peer reviewed study that matches my uh, point of view or it's not true. Well, you know, I'm sorry, but and he, and, he, and he started in with stuff on burden of proof and stuff like that. And I just, I, I have no patience for that stuff anymore. Um, because I, I, I don't, <laughs> he made a lot of assertions about his, about how science works. He made a lot of assertions about the history of science. But before I begin, since uh, I want to hear from the guys who have their own point of view, and I'd like to start with Injun and or Buckley. 
Uh, Engine, do you, would you like to go first? Um, okay. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll go first then. Sorry, I was muted. You go oh, first. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I wanted to first say, if you were heading into a debate, I, I would say that you, you didn't really per- perform that well. However, I do know that now that since you were trying to head into like a casual conversation, uh, I, I do think that you did, uh, it did well in entertaining the audience because mm-hmm. I, and it, basically teaching them what, something, because I think that's, that, that I think that's always a good, good thing to, uh, do in, in these kinds of discussions you have. Um, uh, Creighton Crocodile did uh, did go into it as a debate. Uh, I, it was very obvious right from the start. I, I would I would say, uh, and I, I, I while I do admire that uh, Max was really good at um, using uh, using pure skepticism to uh, uh, to try and uh, pin down King Crocodile's rather unconventional beliefs i uh, i do feel like uh it, it, there were a few points where he he could have he could have done better like he could have uh, I, I mean there there is a um i i think king crocodile was just kind of being ridiculous at that point when he was saying oh well there's you have to have a scientific study proving that christians are discriminated and uh, there, and so um, they, and, and go crowdfund, go crowdfund the study so that I could prove it to him. And I'm like, what, what? You want me to go <laughs> crowdfund a study for 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 your satisfaction to 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 establish something that is widely observed and can be found from all sorts of sources? I I mean, he did come like he was loaded for bear looking for a debate, and I wonder if there was a mistake there because I truly thought we were just having a relaxed conversation and exchanging views. The idea that I have to have in my hip pocket immediately references for everything is not a conversation. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I said, if anybody wants any references after this, I'll be free to get them. One of the things I keep noticing, by the way, is they rarely ask for them. They'll demand them, but when I'll say, well, you know, get back to me, uh, it's a, it's a, your reasonable request here, what, what is it you need references for? They almost never do. Well, that's because, the, uh, if I were, may, that's probably because they're playing for the audience. They are playing for the audience, and it's a cheap trick, right? And I, I, I honestly believe that this is how most of the atheist uh, gurus and cult leaders who run, you know, are professional atheists and get paid to advocate their point of view. Th- their main trick is putting their opponent on the defensive and avoiding having to back up anything they believe. Oh, and, man. And it's yeah. usually uh, guilty until proven innocent. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. uh, one more thing about King Crocoduck. I, I would like to just... It, 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 something that it, I've been studying a lot about um, universals, um, Platonic versus um, uh, Platonic versus Aristotelian view and how they play into uh, and the proof of both. By the way, Max, I would try to look into into that uh, I would try to look into that to uh, see that's uh, it's a very it's actually a rather interesting topic oh uh, you might not I mean it's very heady uh, but it what's the topic uh, um like the the whole uni- the a topic of universals realism Platon- Platonism versus Aristotelianism and their views on it yeah but, but it, 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 he was just talking. I think King Crocodile was talking nonsense. He was advocating for for nominalism at that point. He, I, he was he was literally advocating for nominalism when he cl- he kept claiming that logic and math were uh, were just conventions uh, were just conventions because we just make uh, we make new theories. Um, see, when I said that we can't impose math on the universe. He said they do just that all the time. Yeah, like, th- that was actually the best part of the discussion. 
because I was just stunned by it. I didn't know what to do with it. I, I, I really because you have you, specialty math that the that they that you use in certain fields, or you may have to invent new techniques in math to to look at or accomplish something. Uh, and then he just said, how do you define specialty maths? I'm sorry, am I so stupid on math that there is no such thing as people going out there and saying, we're going to need to specialize kind of mathematical language to do this? I mean, they do that all the time. Isn't that what programming languages are? Am I wrong? I, I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. well, how I'm sorry, if I could jump in here. They actually uh, went over this uh, in the after show, which I watched a little of. I was not, okay. And, and so, uh, yeah, they he, they have kind of a, a, a TMM position, but it's it's a, it's an absurd uh, belief that that well, ma they say mathematics is descriptive, as if that is somehow a a, a powerful, meaningful uh, statement in and of itself. Uh, if something is descriptive, that only means it describes something. So obviously, there is some referent for 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 uh, our, our little codifications of mathematics. But then they also seem to think that mathematics uh, uh, is only a description of the universe, but we could easily posit another universe that observes uh, different sets of, of, of physical laws, but the mathematics uh, used to describe them would be the same. So it's a nonsensical oh, position. It uh, is a nonsensical yeah. position. And what's more than that, you cannot say that science is objective and, and hold that position. Because I, I had a debate recently with a with an atheist. His, his name is his name is like a philosoph a philosophic one. His his name is I think it was a philosophical mind. That was his name. Uh, we, I had a debate recently with philosophical mind over this topic. <clears throat> Sorry, and I brought up the issue of universals, and I told him. Okay, if you say that um, math and logic and and all this are just uh, are just things we name that have no reference to what is in reality, they're just complete arbitrary. Then you have no argument against the P the SJWs in South Africa that claim we want to decolonize science. And when I and he was not, not able to give a satisfactory answer. Uh, to be fair, he did since he was a philosoph philosophy PhD, I mean, philosophy master's degree, who teaches at a university for a living. He was able to defend it better than King Crocoduck, but that's not saying much <laughs> because he kept he he was not able to um, adequately explain. Why? How you couldn't? Uh, how uh, universe uh, categories in science could refer to reality? Well, um, and yeah, it's just and a very nonsensical position. I, I don't understand why anyone who has any experience in science would advocate for this position at all. Hang Honestly, on a quick when second. we have a theory, when we have a theory about say electrons, we don't say that electrons are just arbitrarily slapped on to arbitrary things. That we just we just name them and are that these names aren't somehow reflective of actual things. We mean that there is something in common to those individual electrons that is real and that we notice in nature. That's not something arbitrary that we impose onto it. Uh, oh yeah, I agree. By the way, I forgot to mention everybody. Just, just this is just a co mostly casual conversation or analysis show. And uh, please, everybody, go check. The, we got deflating atheism here. Uh, go check out his channel. We got Math Mathoma, who mostly does math with sidelines and this stuff. Um, go check out Mathoma's channel. Go check out White Engine's channel. Buckley and and John Baptiste here have been on the Red Pill Religion team for a year or two now. Okay, so anyway, Mathoma. Yeah, I, 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 what I, what I found particularly fascinating was his claim. I mean, I, I literally said math is not something we impose on the universe. It's not a product of, of our imaginations or, or something very close to that. And he said, yeah, it is. And, 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 and I'm sorry, at that point I was detached because he had just made an assertion I don't see how anybody can justify. He tried, well, you know, a little smoke with, well, you know, the, the, the Platonic, Aristotelian, that's old school, the, the, the philosophers, uh, you know, you, you look at the majority, a survey of the majority of academic philosophers says X, and I'm like, that, that's not a, that's not an art, that's not a good argument. That's just a current year argument. You know, I just had it in with this uh, this uh, anti-theist earlier that says he refuted Plato. 
Yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, prove your extraordinary claim. Edward Phaser actually, uh, Edward Phaser in his book Five Proofs for the Existence of God, he, um, while he does use Platonic arguments for God's existence in the book, he does refute uh, Plato's theory, a theory of universals, which is called ultra realism, as opposed to uh, something like uh, ultra realism is the position held by. Um, Plato and uh, St. Augustine that says that it's uh, the universals exist in like another world, like a platonic world. Uh, Mm -hmm. And the uh, moderate realism, which is held by Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas says that they don't exist in another world, but they're intrinsically in the things in reality. And then that, and then when we think about the universals, the, the mind abstracts them out of the things and we can contemplate them. And that's how we categorize them. You know, it's, but, uh, but, um, and that's actually a very interesting debate that has gone on in Christian circles for over a thousand years, actually. Uh, yeah. But, and we're not going to solve every, every problem like that. I, I, I should also mention, by the way, that, King Crocoduck made claims that he found countless uh, flaws and misrepresentations of science, which I, I honestly think he's lying when he says that. He says he found, I don't know, something like 40, I don't remember what the number he said was, um, misrepresentations of the science in Mike from Inspiring Philosophies. I, I honestly think he's a lying Id- ideologue there. The one example he gave me was really pretty ridiculous as I look at it, but I didn't comment on comment on it there. It's it's I, I sent it to Mike from Inspiring Philosophy, and he's going to get back to him. I literally don't believe King Crocoduck on those claims, and I want to see him back them up. Um, uh, and and I think people like him should be refor- forced to back up their claims more often because he did claim and present himself like a lot of these professional ideologues do. And I'm sorry if he's insulted to be called the professional ideologue, but it's what he is. Um, you know, they, 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 oh, yeah. they promise yeah. pose of being the science expert. And then one who knows all about that. He even tried to claim the history of, si- of mathematics, Mathoma, over the last century and a half or so, including invoking Einstein and... Uh, uh, Newton. Heisenberg, I think, or Newton, uh, Newtonberg basically said, you know, the whole classical view of maths is just dead. The last century and a half has shown we don't need that. Uh, I don't know if he said century and a half exactly. The last couple of centuries shown we don't need that. Nobody believes that anymore. And it's like, yeah. I didn't get a chance to say it, but not a single one of the people he named is a, phil- is a scientific or methodological naturalist. Not a single name he named. Yeah, you know, uh, when you hear these claims, I mean, we always have to come back to what the argument is. Like, is, is the form that they're using something respectable? Or is it just some argument from popularity or argument yeah. from, chrono- from chronology? That it, just because something is more recent doesn't mean it's correct. I mean, who gives a crap what the majority yeah. of philosophers in, in the next, in the current century believes? It's going to be oh, different yeah, than what, um, the, what they believe in the next century. Has no bearing on whether after a, correct. Yep, and they're after a debate. After and they're after a debate discussion, uh, which uh, a lot of people like, uh, sh- not just uh, King Crocoduck, but Shannon Q, and they brought Aaron McRaw in, and what? they're basically talk. They're basically dismissing Inspiring Philosophy Soul series and talking about how they can explain consciousness. They can't, and they should be required to do so. Oh my God! I, I I can't believe Shannon Q. In in fact, uh, oh good lord! I, I, I really uh, I regret to say this, but uh uh uh, Shannon Q. was uh supposedly getting very angry with with your your remarks about about medical tracking surveys, and then she she put in like like as a counterpoint to you the fact that we know about like serotonin and we can mark these things, but we only know about those things. Due to the subjective reports of the of the subjects in the study, so it yeah. doesn't refute your point at, at all that we know about things like serotonin. At some uh, point, Shannon is uh, going to have to admit she's a committed ideologue. No, not don't, uh, don't, don't say that. Don't say that about her. Anyway, oh, um, they were okay. also they were also they were also going on about uh, brain death and multiple personalities. I'm like, yeah, it's called multiple personality, not multiple consciousness. 
Well, oh, this, well. was a, this was in the after report on Mike from Inspiring Philosophy. Why aren't the, why aren't the religious people being asked to come on to do after action reports with them? See, I don't know. I mean, are these guys really up and up and, and straightforward, or are they really just kind of setting things up so as to help their atheist buddies rather than having an honest conversation? I mean, they had an after talk report about me, so I'm not there for that. Hmm. And I'm not I'm not invited in to have one of my own. I guess we have one here. Um, and, and, and really, it was not pitched to me as a debate. It said it would be a friendly conversation. Um, yeah, I'm the sorry. whole notion that I should be prepared and loaded with bears and have a bunch of references when we're just supposed to be talking. Um, oh, I, yeah. I don't and know. The, yeah, and the fedora tippers in the live chat were just having at it. I, oh, I, 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 I really, don't care. That, that seems like trying to set me up to make me look bad when I was told it was a casual <laughs> conversation. Um, but yeah, they I, think you suck. Well, well, uh, I don't Kai, think, hey. they, they don't think anybody sucks. See, that's the thing. I, I don't care what their commenters say. At least not many oh, yeah, bother coming in to flood our, our videos anymore because they've realized it doesn't work. Literally, it most of them are mooks who are going to say the same thing no matter what happens. They look for anything it was mostly, to jump on. It was, it was mostly co confirmation bias. Like, the guy I disagree with totally destroyed and wrecked the other guy I disagreed with. Grabs oh, another yeah. Dorito. And, and that's okay, so, you know, because a lot of this is young men, basically, uh, going back and forth. So they want that, that, that language. And that's why sometimes when people get after me for being too, too ranty or too sweary or too whatever it is, I'm like, no, these are the kind of people who respect that. All um, right. Um, I'd, um, like to, I'd like to say one last thing, uh, and then maybe we can hear some, some stuff. And then after that, we can hear some stuff about methodological la naturalism. Yeah. Because uh, know methodological that. naturalism, that <laughs> has to have been the most, the, the king of the conversation. Well, first, um, I'd like to make one last point about, like, the first half of that uh, debate. Um, uh, I, one thing about King Crocoduck. Okay, if, if he's watching this, uh, I'd like him to explain to me why, if, if having multiple theories proves we just make things up as we go, why is science just not th th just making things up as we go? Why? I mean, how, how could it progress anywhere? How could it uh, uh, like, be directed at truth? Well, to be uh, well, to refer back to the video, King Crocoduck used as evidence that we just make up math as we go the fact that there are con mutually exclusive, um, mutually contradictory views of logic and mathematics throughout history, but. But there are mutually contradicting scientific theories as well. I mean, Ptolemaic's, uh, Ptolemaic, uh, 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 Ptolemaic cosmology is, not, uh, is contradictory to Newtonian cosmology. And um, I, I mean, in Einstein, Einstein's theory of relativity qu uh, contradicts some of the stuff in quantum mechanics. I mean, does he think that competing scientific theories proves that Science is just subjective. I, I tell you, th these are all questions that need to be asked. And again, Crocoduck needs to answer them and needs to answer them directly. I don't know that he will. I think the crowning thing of the whole thing was the obsession with methodological naturalism. And in fact, this, this fetish, this superstition over methodological naturalism appears to be current in the online atheist cult movement's thinking. Uh, because I remembered uh, I was accused by some of them before, by Shannon and some of those as refuting methodological naturalism, um, when I had never even brought up methodological naturalism. I brought up scientific naturalism generally. Um, in point of fact, Croc King Crocodile Doc made numerous extraordinary claims he absolutely cannot back up about methodological naturalism. And the first started with, with the thing that they all seem to agree, which is that methodological naturalism and science are the same thing. And he emphasized that many times. And uh, when I said that's crap, which it is, I, I, I had only heard this once before, and I thought these people are just not being honest. I didn't say anything about methodological naturalism, because I didn't. Um, but now I see it's coming up again. They, this seems to be one of their new tropes that their little, their little cult network is into. 
uh, methodological naturalism is science. And if you don't have methodological naturalism, what do you have? I was literally asked to say, if we're supposed to ditch methodological naturalism, what do you replace it with? And I was stunned because I'm like, methodological naturalism is not something you need to replace per se. It's, 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 it's in fact potential. What I'd say now is it's potentially useful for certain things. And engineers uh, will, will, will grok methodological naturalism real well and do not, lots of nice things with them, with it. Um, and you can do good science with it, but it has never been the case that methodological naturalism and science are the same. Unless there's some effort now to push them uh, together and make them coterminous on the same thing. Um, maybe maybe we should let them do that because then it'll be more exposed what an ideology uh, ideology method uh, you know naturalism is because it's purely an ideology. You know th this has very little. This has very little to do because what the methodological naturalist usually wants to do is parlay this into an argument for metaphysical naturalism yes. to, to say that because science is being defined in this way as being that which the only proper method is to assume that only nature exists. What he wants to do is go from that to saying that all that exists is natural and all that can be known is through the methods of the empirical sciences. But he actually needs an argument for that. Usually what, yeah. they, what they try to do in my experience is they try to parlay this into an argument for metaphysical naturalism, which is well, a, it's an invalid inference. I'll explain to you how, how he was trying to do it because, as I said, I saw the last 15 minutes. It was clear to me that King Crocoduck was uh, running a shell game there, and I wasn't really sure if, if Max was wise to it at the time. He was, he was basically doing a sleight of hand. Is that the first and foremost, the first and foremost error is referring to methodological naturalism as, as an ideology, as, as a belief system. And so what atheists tend to do is that they smuggle in uh, their preferred suppositions uh, into, into their kind of ontology. And uh, you'll notice, I call it kind of like presupposition laundering. It's like money laundering. It's like you, you disown it, but then reclaim it at a later time. So uh, uh, it's kind of like when atheists say, oh, well, you know, God's non-existence is the default assumption. And so they don't have to claim any sort of burden for proving that. They just kind of reclaim it later on. And so with this whole uh, uh, methodology, he referred to himself as a methodological naturalist as if that is a belief system he has, which is wrong because a, a Christian scientist performing an experiment is a methodological naturalist within the confines of that experiment. A, a Jewish scientist is a methodological naturalist. So if he can explode his methodological naturalism to ontological naturalism, uh, that's nonsense because any religious believer who is performing a scientific experiment would by the same means have to explode their methodological naturalism into, into metaphysical naturalism as well, which obviously isn't the case. Yeah, I mean, I, I could I could identify as a methodological idealist when I do mathematics. Yeah, but what in the world does that tell us about what's in reality about ontology? That, that, of course, that's not going to imply that um, metaphysical idealism is correct because I happen to be working only with ideas when I do things like prove mathematical theorems. I mean, what, well, what in the world does this have to do with anything about reality? There was an argument there that that's the other point where he was talking about results that he gets from methodological naturalism, which which uh, uh, you could have dug into that because, I mean, oh, what, what are you measuring right. results? Well, it was a free-ranging conversation. And I, I, I was ready to go after him over that, but, but I'm like, uh, you know, we're just having a conversation. I'm going to try and stop attacking. But honestly, he literally did make the claim that, you know, using, na you know, methodological naturalism is the only way you can derive truth. And I was like, you can't even do that in science because there's all sorts of things we could accept as, as science that do not use methodological naturalism. Um, unless, and, and this was one of the other things he did. It was a slippery tangle. And I've seen, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. about because he but, also claimed that his methodological naturalism comes first, then he is an ontological uh, uh, naturalist because the methodological naturalism is what proves naturalism to him. It was very incoherent, but he basically liked to claim that ontological naturalism is different. 
and I've seen this slippery trick before. I've even heard it said by, by one guy that creationists confuse ontological and methodological naturalism. Uh, nonsense. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 it's it's these guys. It's certainly Crocoduck. Methodological naturalism cannot exist unless you have an ontological basis for it in the first place. You can't say that methodological naturalism is just something that developed naturally in how you perceive the universe and has no assumptions in it. No, any source on methodological naturalism will tell you that to use methodological naturalism, you must start from the ontological and philosophical scientific set of assumptions, the boundary conditions that there is nothing supernatural. There's but no those, afterlife, those there's no God, there's no sudden, nothing supernatural. It's an assumption built into methodological naturalism, which can be effective for engineering and certain physics projects, but is useless in all kinds of fields of, uh, of scientific endeavor and is merely a set of assumptions. So, for example, you, so, there's, no, there's no methodological naturalism in psychology, as far as I know. Uh, many psychologists work under that assumption, but that's, that's not an assumption. In, in psychology doesn't rely on it. Um, I don't, I, I see no evidence that, and he also claimed that you have to do Popperian falsification to do science at all. And any science is not doing that is not doing science. And I'm like, most of medical science, I should have said this, most of medical science cannot be falsified. You, you, oh, yeah. With, with Popper, I mean, th this is a view that's come on under heavy criticism in the last 50 years or so, because I mean, if you kind of reflect upon, like when you actually do science, when you have an experiment that has a result that you you're unsure of. There are multiple possibilities going on. Either you screwed up with the experiment, you have to determine whether that's um, the incorrect thing, or whether the background theory is what's uh, incorrect. So there's no strict falsificationism well, yeah. going on, even in experience. I mean, we got Fedora science doesn't work in the, the way Popper thinks it does. Oh no, Fedora tipper got... alert, Fedora alert. Okay, what atheist is, is what's happening in the chat? I kind of like it. I used to be oh, as a parent, I used to be called a fedora wearer, so I like calling the atheists that. The atheists had the term fedora wearer first. I think they transferred it to MRAs, but um, yeah. Oh, somebody said that we got to. Who's who's commenting? Uh, these guys, um, uh, Ben Carpathy and Adam Smith. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I mean, they seem to be have. What of like all the findings? I'm not sure what they're talking about, so I guess I'll go back and look at them later. I I really think all these young atheists who are being who are having their their brains messed up and their ability to understand science messed up by people like Crocodile, who is an ideologue and a professional. I thought we were being friendly, but it seems like maybe I was being brought in uh, for a bit of a bait and switch. Um, uh, 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 but you know, uh, he said we were, they said we were going to discuss whether faith is good. And I started with the correct starting point that they didn't know anything to do with, which is that science is and always has been and always will be a faith-based endeavor. Um, I have told them I'd like to come back and talk to them and I don't necessarily want to talk to Crocodile. What I hope to do is set them up with Seigart or, or, uh, Sarah Salviander since these are working scientists with considerable papers and accomplishments um, Much in their resume. Huh? Much better idea. Oh, it is. It is. Um, uh, and Cy Goddard especially will not be snowed by, 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 by uh, uh, Crocodile's uh, tergiversations and evasiveness and slippery definitions and convenient epistemological uses and ludicrous claims like the claim that we impose math on the universe. Oh, Crocodile um, is just because we can invent new mathematical techniques. I mean, is a physicist. right. He's a physicist. I know. So, uh, and, and Seigart's a biochemist and won't be snowed by him. He's a, he's a biochemist of considerable achievement. Um, and uh, he'll tell you, you know, teleology is, is making a huge comeback in the sciences because you can do things with it that you can't get done with, meth with methodological naturalism. So, I mean, one alternative, if you have to have an alternative, I mean, all, all, all methodological naturalism is a st set of starting axioms and assumptions and faith positions um, by which you will conduct your experiments. That's it. That's all it is. Can, can I just say uh, uh, what it seems to me he was doing was basically a variation of the uh, street epistemology routine. 
And the whole thing about street epistemology is supposedly it's a method by which we route out uh, people's credulous beliefs, but ironically and perhaps fittingly, it actually preys on people's credulousness because you have this kind of voluble fast talker, and uh, he was just pelting you with words. So, he Max, was. if you were a little punch drunk, I mean, I, I totally understand. Uh, White Engine, could you mute yourself? You're, you're giving us noise again. But yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead. If, if you were uh, if if you were a little punch drunk, I, I I don't blame you at all. But but he was running a shell game, he and was. Uh, so the, the whole thing about street epistemology is that you get this you get this guy who harangues people on the street, and he gets them to agree to a premise that is very silly, and that premise is that faith is a method. Okay, how many times have you ever heard a religious person say that faith is a method? You've never heard it. It's it's a completely nonsensical statement. But since the person sounds like they know what they're talking about, uh, the person who's the interlocutor, which is what they call them, is kind of inclined to go along with them. And so they agree oh. to the premise that, that faith is a method, and they go along, and when they finally reach an impasse, it's kind of like Socratic reasoning, is that you take this premise and, and you argue it until you reach an impasse, uh once they reach that impasse what gets ditched is not the 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 risable premise that faith is a method which is what should happen no what what the what gets ditched is all their all their beliefs all their faith positions are dismissed as illegitimate so that's kind of what it seems to me uh, uh king crocoduck was doing is that he had uh, the method of methodological naturalism which is kind of it can't be placed alongside other ways of knowing the world. And he, he mentioned like deconstructionism and other things. Uh, it's yeah. like there, there must only be one method to rule them all. And so <laughs> why, why do we have to agree to this premise that a person can only have one method for determining truth about the world? But he kind of, he kind of smuggled that in. And the, th the fact is like, if you're using deconstruction, no matter what you think about it, it's, it's a method for interpreting a, a text or some sort of cultural artifact or whatever. Methodological naturalism is a method for conducting an experiment. So these all have their little uh, uh, closely bracketed uses, but he, he seems oh. to think that there must be one way of knowing the world, which is not a view recommended by the scientific method itself. That is, that is a sort of uh, uh, epistemological position that he's taking, that he's just kind of arbitrarily imposing. And I think I think when someone's kind of fast talking enough, and he's just hitting you with words one after another, uh, you're just kind of inclined to go along with it. So he, it, it was very much like street epistemology. He was very much giving you a runaround. Uh, it yeah. was it was there was a lot of gish galloping there. And the thing is, is that people may have thought, oh, he's not doing well. No, I was stopping and calling him on it. I didn't get to call him on everything because he was gish galloping and making statement after statement after statement, sneaking and smuggling stuff in every time. Every time he I mean, almost every time he spoke, he would put in extra stuff in there that that would have to be challenged. And at this point, I simply look for that. Because I know they're, they're, what, what, what King Crocoduck do, does is actually miseducate people on science and the history of science and makes them demonstrably dumber and worse at science. I, I think that's very obvious when you just listen to that conversation. I mean, I'm sure his fans were all with him and believing his cloud of smoke bullshit. But the fact is he made state claim after claim after claim and statement after statement after statement that does not match the historical record, that does not match the scientific record, and that does not match actual reality or how science is done. I'd actually like to know what he's published on and what his papers are and what his actual achievements are. As a method of naturalist, you can do a lot of good physics, but it doesn't necessarily make you good at science. His fans' um, complaint was you were running away when asked for evidence. That, see, see, and that's not true either, because first off, I was not invited to a debate. I was asked for a discussion, and I promised references for anything anybody wanted. But I didn't come armed for bear uh, with, with, and I shouldn't be expected to. If we're going to be expecting having a formal debate, I will bring all the references I want. If we're just going to have a conversation, it's the same rule that I would have for anybody else in real life. Oh, if I make, if I make a statement and you want to challenge it or you want a reference, let me look into that. Let me get back to you. I mean, that's a reasonable request, but you shouldn't have to have, I shouldn't have to have an encyclopedia of references handy for everything that's in my head. I, I, I really shouldn't. If, if you don't believe a statement and you think it needs to be challenged, we'll do it. 
And I had the flip side. He made so many statements I could challenge him on. I didn't know where to where to stop. Uh, there were sentences he would let out, and there'd be like three freight trains of assumptions there. Um, I, I yeah, I, I I would agree. I think that I, I think that there was a sort of a double standard, and there is sort of a double standard to uh, to these uh, to these debates sometimes. Where the um, the atheist cannot uh, does, is not um, re- is not really required to ha- have any sort of evidence to back their claims, but the theist is. Uh, and I would, and if you turn, but the trick, but the good thing about people who are smart theists uh, can use that against them be, by just asking the atheist for evidence for their assumptions and they will fall apart i would i would like to mention um a shout out to my friend the distributist he did he had a topic with king crocoduck about a completely different topic it was um uh, it was about political philosophy and what we can do to save the west from the sjws and stuff uh and king crocoduck's idea is essentially that we should um, basically turn the social sciences into a hard science and oh, kick out, kick out, and that'll kick out, take care of the problem of feminists in social science, and that, and we should organize society based on the methods of we we should question everything with si- and use Popperian falsification. To, uh, to determine what's, what's going to work and what doesn't. And of course, the ones who get to determine ultimately how to interpret the data and how to interpret the studies will be them. There exactly. Is a, there's a closet tyrant in every single man who talks like that or woman. They, w- they has the science. They understand the science. They has the data. And they has the proper interpretation because they studied science. And it's always a tin pot totalitarian at the other end of that. Yeah, and distribute this. People who get power like that are dangerous and shouldn't be allowed in power. Um, and distrib- distributist actually pointed something like that out. He said, well, what if they question something um, that, that is required for your worldview to work, like free will? I mean, if we don't have free will, then we can't really have these debates. King Crocoduck couldn't give an answer for that. And then he point. Then uh, distributist pointed out that um, that he uh, that his society has never worked in history, and that the current situation with the SJWs and, or should we say, the atheists infiltrating in the academy was brought about by an inconsistent uh, use of his method, and he couldn't answer that. And at the end of the, the discussion, distributor says, well, I came in here ho- uh, thinking that I would have to defend my, philo- my higher metaphysical principles against scientific rationalism and scientism. But instead, I I, what ended up happening is that you uh, kept making assumptions I, and I had to keep asking you for evidence. Which is actually, again, I'm going to say that is the most important thing people can start doing to atheists any time. And atheists don't like it because they always dance away because they never want to be pinned down on anything. Um, but, but I'm sorry, I, I have to say this. Yes, that is, that is their Achilles heel is asking them for evidence. But you always need to be able to identify the sleight of hand. There is always a okay. bell game going on and you need to be able to call them out on it. Oh, I absolutely agree. Slippery use of terms, changing definitions of terms. I've noticed a lot of them love epistemology, whether it's street epistemology, which is totally fake, or real epistemology. Even Kanainen will tell you epistemology, is like it's not really necessary. Um, uh, meta- metaphysics uh, will do uh, in, a lot, in a lot of cases um, because it's really just playing word games. And it's very noticeable to me that people who are into epistemology will switch meanings of words sometimes mid, mid-thought mid even. And uh, uh, I caught King Crocoduck doing that too. 
um, it, you, you do have to look for the tricks. You do look for, have to look for the verbal misdirection. Um, the truth of the matter is atheism is not defensible on any ground scientifically, and there's nothing scientific about atheism, nor is there anything scientific about the idea that there's nothing supernatural. And, and depending on, I, I finally kind of worked this out. Um, science was originally considered natural philosophy. Um, they got, they were, were their own, they became their own, and it was just the study of physical things. And then they became their own branch separate from the other philosophies. And then they started trying to take over more and more. Um, but, uh, uh, uh. They, they, and they will take 18th, 19th century language about naturalism, which uh, and and then 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 will take that to mean that science and naturalism are the same thing, and and they should never be allowed to get away with that shell game because that's just been a slow erosion and change of language over a few centuries. It used to be understood that science was only the study of the physical, which means if you were studying anything that was not physical, it was not science. And the problem is there that there's whole fields of, of, of what we now call scientific in, in, inquiry that don't rely on anything physical um, and that are not subject to physics in any way that you can show. For example, psychology, sociology, archaeology, well, to some extent, archaeology, um, history, uh, uh, but, but it, at least in terms of the sciences, psychology, psychiatry, uh, 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 it, it, they're measuring intangibles. And an intangible is a non-physical thing, and and so to, 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 to so they they've played a long shell game on that one. The fact is that we consider as science all sorts of things. And by the way, observational data is science. So if you are observing supernatural phenomena, you can be doing science on them. There's an ancient science. They, they, let me just science. finish. This. They used to say you could never study the the, the supernatural with science because science only studies the physical the natural therefore um and now they've kind of flipped it around and now, now they've just made it an exclusionary rule so you know they get to say to say decide what non-physical things are science and which aren't but i'm sorry study of ufos as a phenomenon is a science study of near-death experience is a science study of uh, ghost encounters which we do have uh, are science uh, in the same way that public opinion polls are and that sociology and psychology are science um, they're the study of things, the systematized study of things. So the classic view, uh, science could only study the physical. The modern view is any serious study of something that's disciplined and organized and methodological can be called scientific. That's why you get forensics and psychology and sociology and economics. All of these are not measuring the physical. Yeah, you know, this is a general problem, I think, in modern thought is uh, this hyper focus upon epistemology. Now, I, th I think epistemology follows upon what there is, which is to say ontology and metaphysics. So you, you must decide what there is, and then upon that decide what the proper method of studying that aspect of being is. And that's going to vary upon what you're studying. When we, when we try to come to knowledge, for, for example, about who the president of the United States is, we don't do that through the same methods as when I, um, when I smash uh, particles together. And it's some particle accelerator. And that's not the same method as when I prove a theorem in mathematics. And that's because those are different aspects of reality. There, there's no, as the flying atheists would say, there's no one method to rule them all. And that's precisely what these naturalists try to, uh, try to invoke. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it gets old and stale. And it is true, by the way, uh, they, uh, these naturalists are graying out. Young scientists in their forties, thirties and twenties are, 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 anxious to start looking at things that go outside current theory and that don't take current assumptions or that challenge current assumptions, including current assumptions of what is outside of our physical universe, what is beyond our physical universe. We're, we're doing inquiries on that. And by the way, you can't do physical, you can only do limited physical science on that too, because you're, you're looking for something that's not bound by the laws of physics as we know them. I'm going to have an interesting conversation with Johan and Ratz again on that. Uh, we'll also be, oh, that, we'll be doing that tomorrow. We'll also be challenging the guys at South Pillar Talk who are ma mocking the idea of the demonic and, uh, uh, and of exorcism. So we're going to have a conversation about that. But yeah, these guys, I mean, the more I talk to them, the more I know that scientism is an indoctrinated religion. And, and, and King Crocoduck is, is a priest in the scientism religion. Um, there's very little science in what he says. Um, he makes claims about science that aren't true. He makes claims about the history of science that aren't true. He makes claims about the philosophy of science that aren't true. 
Uh, he makes us claims about physics that aren't true. I mean, I, I want to go back, but he seems to have literally said we, you know, we make math up and apply it to the universe. That it's a pat, you know, that we're applying that to the universe. And it's like, no, the only reason you and then I still want to know. I'm sorry, Mathoma. Is there something wrong with the term specialty math? Uh, you know, or specialized math? I mean, isn't specialized math a thing? Aren't there? I mean, uh, I think the programming language is a specialized math, for example. Well, That's something within, odd about within, that phrase. Well, within mathematics, there are certainly different divisions within mathematics. There's geometry, there's algebra, there's analysis. So there, there are different species of mathematics. I mean, I don't, I don't see why that's a problematic thing to say. Oh, and I've heard, I've heard people say, oh, we've got this new problem we're looking at, and we're having to he invent whole new maths just to, just to look at this problem. Oh, sure. That, yeah. There are different branches that come off of um, mathematics as it's usually they, they occur before it's needed in physics. Like um, much of uh, the math that goes into um, general relativity preceded the, the, the physical theory. But his <laughs> assertion is that math is not something that is basically that it's something we invent. And that's all it is. It's not some kind of supernatural thing. Uh, and, and it's like, okay, we ha I just want to say, yeah, we have this universe that appears to follow mathematical rules and laws and appears to do so pretty consistently. Um, why does it do so? The idea that we impose that with our minds is, is ludicrous. I would say that... Um... I'll accuse you of jumping to saying, uh, God did it. No. <laughs> but, you know what? Yeah, they're cheap and that's just a cheap an uh, annoyance. Um, um, I really uh, yeah, hope we get they, to talk to more of these guys. I don't know how much I want to talk to Crocodile because I'd like to pitch some mathematicians, some physicists, and some biologists at him um, since it, he appears to think that he can do things with science that he cannot. I want, him to, I want him to scientifically prove that George Washington was ever president. I want him to, I want him to, <laughs> scienti I want him to scientifically prove that Abraham Lincoln is, uh, was ever assassinated. <laughs> or even exist as a person. I want to, to know, I want him to prove to me scientifically, using methodological naturalism, that Abraham Lincoln ever existed. Yeah, Max, don't, don't you understand? Uh, George Washington was just a myth that was constructed. Well, uh, yes. The revolutionary. The Americans. There's, no, yeah, yeah, There's they, no evidence that he existed. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, they talked about the uh, apple and the tree, the, him cutting down the cherry tree. That that was totally myth, so therefore everything and it did. Exist. And having, a, having wooden teeth. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, we go through our everyday lives accepting things as true just from our immediate apprehension of them. So when when an, a, a naturalist says, I only believe things that can be proven scientifically, that is a lie. You would not be able to get yeah. through your day if, if, if you had to use the scientific method to uh, uh, believe every truth claim. That's completely abs absurd. And how, how about just that for a method of learning about the world is using our own observation, using our own judgment, uh, using our own reason. Is that somehow not narrow enough for him? I mean, oh, if, but, if I oh, see uh, a cow standing in the field and I could see a cow and I could hear a cow and I could smell a cow, I'm going to believe that there's a cow in the field. Uh, <laughs> and that, that kind of empirical observation is necessary for uh, methodological naturalism to work. So, I, I mean, that's our way of knowing the world is just see the things that we observe in our everyday lives and accepting them as true unless we have some sort of a compelling reason to believe otherwise. And, oh, but um, George adding Abraham. That, uh, uh, well, adding to that, um, yes, uh, I think Thomas Aquinas uh, or some, someone similar said that uh, what is in the intellect is first in the senses. Um, what, what I would add to that is that um, we take what we experience in everyday life and then we use reason to um, extrapolate truths from all that. Like you can t look at the cow in the field and uh, you could potentially look at the cow in the field and use Aristotle's argument to prove that God exists based off of the cow living in the field. One of the things they, yeah, one of the things they asked me, which again, it set me off because I was like, what? I, the, the question was dumb. If method, if we have to ditch metal, methodological naturalism, <clears throat> dumb question. Um, uh, what's the alternative? Like there's only one. I did find this reference for them, which they could have Googled in 30 seconds as to alternatives to, you know, uh, methodological nationalism. There's a whole group 
devoted to alternatives to methodological naturalism. Here they are, Amnat. I'm sure they'll impeach the character of Amnat and say they're not really scientists and they're all nutty and nobody cares about them and all those usual ad homs that they're fond of. But they have workshops, they have papers, they have presentations, they have calls for uh, uh, you know uh, abstracts. There's a huge demand to ditch methodological naturalism because ultimately it's garbage it's useful for some things but all it really is is a boundary a set of boundary conditions and a set of assumptions which are all faith assumptions by the way he kept saying they're axioms well yes they're faith they're axioms based on faith assumptions one of the more important oh, I mean, but I, we're, I, yeah there's no because they can't defend this position so you just say it's an axiom yeah oh, yeah but that's, a, that's a, yeah but this is that's just a, a cop out. That's what they accuse Christians of doing. I know it is. It, it, oh. it, they accuse that I have atheists all the time on Twitter claiming that I am pushing some presuppositional uh, Christianity whenever I argue for, uh, whenever I use something like the uh, use one of the f Aquinas's five ways. That, that's just, it's just so, and yet. King Crocoduck on their oh herder, it's an axiom. That's just uh, that just means it's a presupposition. That is something you right. look at a priori. Well, there there is something we have to there's something we have to talk about here because there was an argument he slipped in very quickly, uh, uh, so furtively almost uh, that you wouldn't notice it. But the argument was, and we have to talk about this now, is that the methodological naturalism is the only one that gets results. And he he didn't even open that up to discussion. He just he just said it was the case. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's patently false. How are we false. measuring I mean, these results? How are we measuring these results? I mean, yeah, we could point to very obvious ways in which our lives are materially improved by the applications of the scientific method. But since uh, uh, science is, by definition, the study of the natural world, it makes sense that our lives would be materially improved by the study of the material. So that's all well and good. Uh, my life is materially improved by the fact that there are – barbarians knocking down my door and selling my family into slavery. I mean, that, that's also good. You could say that issues forth from Christian morality. So you could say that gets results. I mean, I mean, how are we measuring results here? Oh, yeah, but naturalism is all there is. Haven't you heard? <laughs> yeah. You, what's you, the alternative? You're saying I can't use methodological math, na naturalism. So what's the alternative? What kind of dumb question is that? You can use methodological naturalist methods for all kinds of things, but they aren't science. There, there's there tools you can use. They're assumptions. They're faith assertions. I'd like to hear from John Baptiste, who's been quiet the whole conversation. Before I do, I just want to make a, a point out all science rests on faith assertions, such as, hmm, let's see, math works all the time. Oh, 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 but faith is believing without evidence, haven't you heard? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I, I have to jump in here. Some, I will let me list some other examples. Your faith assumption is that math always works and that everything in the universe is described <laughs> and that it's reliable to do things that way. Your faith assumption is that the laws of physics hold constant and don't change, or if they do, they only change in ways that you can predict. Um, the, con the, the, the conditions, uh, you, you rest on the fact that logic itself works, you rest on faith in the scientists doing the work, you re have faith in the, the publisher and the editors at the peer-reviewed papers, you have faith in the peer-reviewed process, you have faith in your own reason, you have faith that you exist, you have faith that other people exist, you have faith that there is such a thing as a fact, you have fa faith that so there is such a thing as truth. You cannot literally, you literally cannot do science without faith assertions and most axioms that you set as your boundary conditions will be faith-based. If you're doing methodological naturalism, you will have faith-based assumptions in everything you do. So that, that, there's my little rant. John Baptiste, I haven't heard from you yet. You got anything to add here? He's always the quiet yes. one. Yes. Um, just, just in case people don't know what methodo methodological uh, naturalism is it is a uh it is a philosophy of science it is a philosophy um it is one of the many philosophy of sciences uh, as far as how science is supposed to work popperian falsification was created in the uh, 20th century it, it 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 and that was only 
that was only to uh, find out what is pseudoscience and what is not as far as that came around around the same time, like the magnet people were saying the magnets are copper um, heals jo joints and stuff like that. Um, it, it, so it, it's good to keep those things in mind. Um, yeah, Popper, Popper, in fact, Pop, when he proposed his idea on falsifications, I don't think he proposed, I think it was a proposal. I don't think he actually lived by the axiom. Well, um, no, it, it was, I'd it like was to, philosophy. Like, and, and well, and, and, and it was controversial at the time, and it remains controversial. Not all scientists agree in Popper with false, the falsification idea. Well, um, the way Popper so laid it out, especially, um, and 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 multiple scientists I know with 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 not just credentials but real achievements in science, will tell you almost nobody uses Popper's falsification idea. Almost nobody does that. He's he says he's actually never seen it in all his years as a biochemist. And go look at his CV. He's in his seventies. He's done a lot. He's never seen anybody doing science that way. Well, this is kind of why this is Popperian falsificationism is based off of the uh, assumption that the, that the way that scientific theories advance is that um, a scientist stakes his um, a, a scientist stakes all his entire theory on whether or not this one proposition can be true, and if this tr proposition is proven false, then the whole theory is proven true. Uh, and um, that doesn't happen most of the time. And in fact, there's actually an expression that says um, science advances one funeral at a time. <laughs> in, in other words, <laughs> in other words, what the uh, what the uh, science advances by because the scientists who hold the old theories die out and are replaced by new scientists with new theories. Yeah, I've, I've heard that there's always a current. There's not actually no one actually changes their minds. It's just the people who believe the old thing just die out. Yeah, yeah. I think this is. Oh, uh, but but uh, uh, philosophy exactly. is. I think this is just popper. <laughs> philosophy is null and void. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't you heard? Because yeah. Carl said. So. Well, well, who's that laughing in the background? Oh, my lady. <laughs> Oh, oh well. Okay. So, does anybody else have uh, something to add? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I, well, I'm sorry. I, I apologize for uh, talking you talking over you, Max, before. But what I wanted to say is that what he said is there a method that that gets more reliable results than uh, methodological naturalism? There was actually a slam dunk there. There was a slam dunk. You could have just said deductive logic. Because deductive logic arrives at conclusions that are necessarily true, uh, unlike the conclusions that are only uh, uh, probably true or certainly true uh, that you get from the inductive method. So there ah, so deductive logic is an alternative. Um, teleology, approaching things from a teleological perspective is also per perfectly valid. More to the point, I think there's another slam dunk to that, which is really simple. Scientific, you know, methodological naturalists need to prove their ludicrous claim that scientific naturalism, that methodological naturalism has proven the best in the first place. They've never proven any such thing. In fact, I, I wanted to point out to the guy that he quotes Einstein, Newton, and the quantum physics guys, not a single methodological naturalist among them. Not Heisenberg, not Schrodinger, not Planck, not, uh, certainly not Einstein, um, not uh, uh, Feynman. Uh, if I, name me the Nobel Prize winning physicist of, of the last hundred years who embraces methodological naturalism in his work. I, I, I want to know who he is and, and where is he? Name, name me the great star of uh, great accomplishments. The two greatest achievements of, of the last of the 20th century in science, the Big Bang Theory, uh, which which dovetails with uh, with Einstein's relativity, by the way, so it's all, you know, call, call it call it modern cosmology, and quantum physics, both were done by people who rejected methodological naturalist assumptions and didn't use them, and not a one of them was an atheist, but these people are coming in and riding into town, 
declaring victory that they've won with science somehow when the most accomplished scientists did not use their philosophy, their ideology, and many of them specifically rebuked it. Uh, Einstein especially did, um, who was no atheist, by the way, and anybody who tells you was is lying. Yeah, uh, Einstein thought. Out, we will be using an out of context quote from fairly early in his life. He was quite strident. He was quite clear about it as he aged. He also became much friendlier with religious people as he aged, mm. uh, which yeah. is a common transition, by the way. Einstein said that uh, ideological type of atheists are like slaves, still feeling the weight of their chains. Yeah, yeah, well, they are because it completely destroys your brain, your mind, and your ability to think. I'm really shocked that the average. Uh, atheist naturalist uh, even can tie his shoes regularly because the I mean I mean being facetious but I mean really the when I when my brain finally became free of of materialism and the ludicrous indoctrinated assumptions of naturalism which is an ideology and a religion and a faith based position it's also a philosophy but it's entirely a faith based philosophy which defines itself by all data that it will not accept. Mm. And that it will, and all ideas it will auto exclude before it begins. It's an incredibly narrow, and, and and really the only thing I can think of that where it would work reasonably well is engineering projects, and 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 just trying to test how metals work and and things like that. But even then, it might be a mistake. If there is something outside the laws of physics that is having an impact on your chemistry which is not impossible, and you won't look for that as an explanation, you have actually limited your scope of inquiry. What's, um, what I think is uh, uh, kind of interesting is that, uh, sorry to cut you off, but uh, uh, when uh, Newton arrived at his uh, inverse, square, uh, inverse square theory of gravitation, uh, there was actually not uh, much empirical evidence uh, to support the claim. And, and somebody could correct me if I'm wrong here, but, but uh, the inverse square theory of gravitation was probably the first attempt to use mathematics to describe physics, pretty much close to the first attempt. And so there, there was, he simply did not have the means to, uh, to measure this, but uh, he had great faith that God would create the universe to be intelligible to us, that he kind of guesstimated it. So if he did not have that, that, that faith, that God would create the, the universe to be intelligible and describable by mathematics, uh, we would not have had that first that first step forward in the first place. Absolutely correct. In fact, one of the reasons science, as we know it today, clearly came out of, of Christian thinking is because of everything you just said. The Christians can approach the world and say, you know, Jesus is the God is the divine logos. John, God is math and logic itself. We actually that is a Christian belief. If anybody hasn't heard that, you should know it that Jesus is is logic itself. Um, uh, amongst yes, other things. Speak, speaking of Newton, he thought atheists were morons. He did uh, well, and uh, um, so my point is. <laughs> Yeah, he said that atheism is so senseless and, and repugnant to reason that, that there's no wonder it's never had many uh, professors. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. And the, by the way, they misquote him, too, and say, you know, uh, uh, on something that was in his stuff, he's, I, I leave that to God. And, of course, they auto-interpret that. Newton said that on something once. I forget what it was. But they auto-interpret that to mean, so Newton invoked magic. And what he really meant was, uh, was much more philosophical. I don't know what else is in there. I, you oh, know, I, you don't know. you guys know? Don't you guys know that Newton would have been burnt at the stake if he professed his true atheism? Yeah, no. In, <laughs> fact, in fact, he had he he had really weird uh, and what most Christians would call heretical ideas. Although he was a Christian, um, he was never in any way an atheist. He did not think anything well at all of the position. Uh, in fact, you'll have a hard time. I mean, sure, we have Stephen Hawking. Who, who has genuinely achieved things in physics. Nothing Nobel-worthy, mind you. He's certainly not the brightest physicist in the world, and he, is an, he was an ideological atheist, but I mean, but, but otherwise, most atheist scientists are nothings, who, who from what I can see, um, because they can't accomplish anything, they get into the skeptic racket, especially because the skeptic racket is really really easy that is the that is the that, that is the dirtiest secret in fact right here i'm gonna tell you the, the, i mean I, I tell people all the time who are smart 
what we do on Red Pill Religion, heck, what deflating atheism does, is actually remarkably cheap and easy because you can be skeptical of anything. And you I've really can. To, I've, I've yet to see any self-proclaimed skeptics be actually skeptic. No, because what they are all is ideological materialists. They're all uh, scientismic, uh, you know, members of the scientismic religion who believe that scientific naturalism or methodological naturalism is science, um, and that science brings us things. It's like this mighty God that uh, does things for us, and and they'll even speak as if they can speak for mighty science themselves. Crocoduck tried speaking as if he spoke for the entire. Um, scientific community. I can tell Crocoduck there's lots of people in the scientific um, a community who cannot stand his ilk. Um, uh, I know some atheists who would be horrified, but I know atheists who would be horrified by his belief that math and logic are just something that we've made up. That That's anathema to science. Uh, science. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, it's actually, it, that's actually a point of view that you see more commonly either amongst like these sort of postmodern deconstructionist types or am uh, amongst YouTube atheist skeptics in, in that this view that actual, if you look at someone like uh, Bertrand Russell, he, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. He, he was wrong on a lot of things, but he was right when he said nominalism was just, hor uh, was just, crazy and he had and he had really good arguments against nominalism too yeah you, you know one thing about this naturalism that i'm always curious about is um people always say that this is backed in some way by the historical narrative that science um has triumphed over the past say 400 years but i'm always curious what scientific advancement has occurred in say the last 50 years that lends decisive support to this position. Because all throughout history, you never find, you hardly ever find scientists espousing this naturalistic position. So what, what scientific achievements have occurred in say the last 50, 200 years that have um, lended support to this position? And if there are no such achievements, why don't we just conclude that it's just a passing ideology, kind of like communism or Marxism, which I, I think this is kind of what naturalism is, just a passing ideology. It is a passing ideology, and it's passing especially because it's failing. I, I, I will repeat what I've said. It has turned in remarkably little, except a lot of engineers. Um, it, 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 none of the great, what are the great accomplishments of the scientific naturalists, and what is your evidence that scientific naturalism, I'm sorry, methodological naturalism to make the distinction, what is your evidence that this is the best way to do science? What's, what's your evidence? What have you produced with it? You didn't produce the Big I mean, Bang, the, you didn't produce quantum physics, you didn't produce modern cosmology, you didn't produce most of modern medicine, you didn't produce, you, you, maybe you created the digital world of the internet, maybe, if you call that science. Um, but the Western world was, the Western world was, uh-huh? Charles, Coyne, or Aaron Rod, if you know what I'm saying. You, you broke um, up there. The yeah, Western we couldn't what? hear you. I said the Western world world wasn't, Built by men like Dawkins, Krauss, Coyne, or Aaron Rod. You know what I'm saying? No, it wasn't. And by the way, let us repeat again. Jerry Coyne is in no way a scientist. He is, in fact, in many ways a fraud, a liar, and a hideous bully. And his fans are horrible, nasty people. And I, I will say the same thing exactly about Richard Dawkins. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Richard Dawkins is an utter embarrassment as a scientist. He, and, and this is true of other famous atheist scientists. Richard Dawkins is an especially odious example. Clearly an ideologue and a pseudoscientist, independent of his views of religion, clearly an ideologue and a pseudoscientist. And I will stand that up. I'll tell it to his face or any of his fans that he's a pseudoscience, because I can show that it, with both mimetic theory, his, his bullshit mimetic theory, um, uh, which happens to sound like another theory that's valid, but his is nowhere close to valid. Uh, there's a whole selfish gene, neo-Darwinist paranoia is falling apart. As a scientist, Richard Dawkins is genuinely embarrassing. He may have one book, but those books are not selfish gene or the God delusion. Um, and this is a common pattern with these people. That's why I'm saying, I think a lot of people who haven't accomplished much as a scientist, um, well, you know, but they have the PhD and the degree, and they have a, an ability to sound smart and talk like a teacher, so they'll get into the skeptic racket and puncture other people's ideas without ever having to defend their own. 
Kind, kind, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. kind of like Lawrence Krauss, you know, he, he's the geekiest kid in school and he's a, a scientist of middling accomplishment. But all he has to do is, you know, kind of uh, edge his way into the into the fourth empty seat of the four horsemen. And suddenly he's hanging out with Hollywood stars and, and, and you know, doing doing uh, uh, doing little shows everywhere around the world, you know. It's very he's another, he's another hateful cry bully, by the way. I love that phrase, cry bully. It's helpful. Most atheists are cry bullies when push comes to shove. It's they're tempting vicious, enough. They're nasty. They're vicious. They're nasty. They're obnoxious, just like feminists, just like SJWs. Most ideological atheists are vicious cry bullies it's, who cry foul that they. It's they it's, come in, it's they come looking in and at Krauss is tempting. Huh? It's tempting to not want to give a sixty-four year old man a swirly. Oh man, I'm t yeah. looking at Krauss is tempting. To yeah, uh, hey, I, um, he is a I cry think... bully. He is a cry bully, like most of the atheists. They say hateful, obnoxious, uh, uh, abusive, bullying things, things that you could easily challenge. And then the minute you give them any grief back, they talk like they're persecuted. Feminists do this, SJWs do this, and atheists do this. And that's because most atheists, atheism and SJWism at its core wind up being the same. In fact, I'm sick of most anti-SJW atheists, to be honest with you, because most anti-SJW atheists, when they claim to be you know, libertarians and against Marxism and all that, accept all the bullshit, fake history, and fake science that go behind the atheism, the Marxist atheism, which oh, but you're hurting, huh? You're hurting. Hey, you're, um, hurting you're hurting. You're hey, hurting Dawkins' uh, hey, feelings. Hey, I don't guys, care if his feelings um, are hurt. He's vile, huh? He's success, right, damn it. Um, guys, I, I think oh, we've what? been going on for about an hour now. I think we might want to yeah, wrap was, this up. I was enjoying it. Um, I just, just so people know, I have. You know, we, I guess we've given here the alternatives as if you need an alternative for, for a, a small set of tools that, no, that, that people don't use that much. Um, you know, teleology, deductive logic, <laughs> and, 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 and go look at the conferences that scientists are giving as, 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 as researchers are champing at the bit to ditch the ludicrous limitations and the unproductive limitations, the counterproductive limitations, the counterintuitive, irrational limits of methodological naturalism on science. And yeah, oh yeah, the the, um, the skeptic trademark community is, is crashing down. You heard of uh, Krauss's uh, sexual indecencies and is now being thrown under the bus by Harris. I, I I just can't wait until Sam Harris gets his comeuppance because I genuinely consider Sam Harris the most vile popular atheist running today with way too much. What a fraud Sam Harris is. I cannot believe anybody still listens to that man. His audience has to be a bunch of really stupid, messed up people. Okay, I, I, and I mean that, by the way. I'll defend it. I could talk an hour on any one of these guys and why they're full of car garbage and why they're poisonous to the culture, because they are. Coyne, Krauss, Harris, uh, Dawkins, uh, Pendulette, uh, Marr. Uh, you name the famous atheist, and they're a poisonous, nasty uh, uh, ideologue and bully. And Who they have their own... Science and, and, history. and they, ha and they have the their famous own cults. Cults. Yeah, you name the famous atheist. They all lie about science. They they're all lie cults. about history. Um, uh, the only ones who come close to having much integrity are people like Hawking, but even there, he frequently spoke on subjects completely out of his outside of his own expertise. Um, I, I, really, it's time to stop being impressed with atheists, guys, and to start making them back up their own garbage, and for them to start receiving the same kind of rhetoric they use on others. Let's go ahead and close up in the next few minutes here. I'd like to give everybody a chance at a, at a final thought in case anybody had anything out they didn't want to get out, and I will start with... Uh, uh, with Mathoma, and then I'll ask John Baptiste, then I'll ask Injun, then I'll ask Buckley, then I'll ask Deflating. So, actually, I forgot. You know what? I'm just going to ask White Injun first because I forgot my own order. Sorry for the noise the TV was on. Okay. All right. Mathoma, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, I think in these discussions about naturalism, I think we always have to come back to what the arguments are, identify what they are, identify the form of reasoning that they're using, and decide whether these are any good. Um, I, I, I'm not convinced that they're 
are very many good arguments for metaphysical naturalism. Um, and that certainly the, the inference doesn't hold going from, uh, from methodological to metaphysical naturalism. And even for methodological naturalism, this isn't that obvious of a position either, because um, there are so many background assumptions that one needs to even articulate this position. One has to say what science is, one has to say what nature is, which no one ever bothers to ask. Um, and even the arguments for methodological naturalism, like the progress of science, uh, that doesn't lead to the inference that uh, math methodological naturalism is true. I mean, I could just, I could run that same argument and say that mathematics has had way more progress than physics had, and mathematics only deals with abstract ideas. It doesn't really deal with anything that's of itself physical. And th that doesn't mean that we should use only methodological idealism, and that certainly doesn't lend support to metaphysical idealism. That would be a ridiculous inference. So I, I think the sorts of arguments that are often given for, for naturalism of any stripe are just quite bad once you identify what the form of reasoning is. So I think one, one should always come back to that. What is the form of reasoning? What actually is the argument for this position? Yeah, very good, very good. John Baptiste, did you have anything you wanted to get out? I, uh, yeah, um, I think that the, uh, that the non-sequitur channel is, is atheist in general, and I think they set you up, to be honest, um, with the whole... It, it it's just even the way that they framed it, it, it it's they said, Oh, this is a discussion and then sniggering behind your back, you know, it's really yeah. a debate. It just seems like that's the format of their show is debates. And so and you know, it's it's a sneaky tactic tactic. I, I think that it that, yeah, and I, I have to go back to my old adage of never trust an atheist. I'm sorry if that hurts somebody's snowflake feelings, but never trust one. They don't appear to have ethics. I was I, I was told it was just a casual conversation, and furthermore, I would say that uh, 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 don't trust an anti-atheist. I guess not. I mean, really, I mean they they they, they rely on ad homs and then they whine about ad homs. They rely on mischaracterizing people and then they mischaracterize people. They rely on saying things about science uh, and speaking as if they have the holy grail of science and nobody else does when, in fact, they frequently get their science wrong and do science wrong. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, Buckley, did you have any final thought? Well, I, I would like to talk about – well, I don't think that non-sequitur show – first of all, I don't think the non-sequitur show um, was trying to set, uh, set you up for the atheist. I think they were just chasing clickbait, which is – which is, is sort of, uh, which is sort of what they do, uh, what you do on YouTube. So, uh, I I would try to talk That's to them point. about. Uh, I would like try to t uh, to talk to them on that uh, that. But also about King Crocoduck, I if it, King Crocoduck, if you go around claiming that um that um math and logic are just things we make up that do not have a some sort of correlation with something that is in reality. Um, I'm, t I'm not talking about platonic forms or anything. I'm talking about something in reality that the numbers, uh, that things like numbers and th universals like redness or triangles or humanity, things like... M if those things are not in re reality then you cannot do science because science requires you to make categories based on the traits that real things have and if real things do not have traits if real things just are if we everything in scientists everything scientists do is just arbitrary then what the hell are we even studying in science like seriously I, I think I think you need to think hey, anybody who wants to advocate for nominalism. I, I would. I, there are arguments made by atheists against the sort of position that um, someone like uh, someone like Crocoduck was making. Uh, read some of Bertrand Russell and his view, uh, his um, arguments against nominalism, because. That is, it's just, I mean, it, Bertrand Russell's argument was, I, I think, 
I think it was the problems of philosophy chapter nine. He talks about uh, the problems with the nominalism, the nominalist point of view. Read some of that and uh, get, get back to me on that. Sounds good. All right. And finally, deflating atheism, my punk soul brother, what's, what's your thoughts <laughs> on that? Well, uh, uh, not to kind of get catty at here, but we can't discount the, uh, the slimy influence of one Steve McRae. Uh, just to delve into my own experience briefly, uh, yeah. I appeared on one of his group hangouts. I got about 15 minutes. I got about 15 minutes of time to talk and that was it. And then he then proceeded to do three whole shows devoted to my videos where he lied about what me and Max had said. And so that is, that is their, their MO. They'll have you on a little bit and they'll devote like three or four whole hours to you and then lie about what you said. And then when no Christian wants to go on their show, they say, Oh, well, Christians are just afraid of us intellectual giant atheists. Uh, they're afraid of us. It, it, it's, it's really just a whole vibe. It's, vile and poisonous uh and you and steve mcrae of the great debate community uh is also part of the uh the non sequitur show so we would uh, look so past that. steve's all right man you think he's <laughs> all right okay i think i think he's a snake i think he he was one of the people who tried to get me censored i'd like to hear him deny it i think he's, he's a agno snake. he's also agnostic yeah well, i don't believe that either I'm um, sorry. I don't believe. Hey, I don't feel bound to use Steve McRae's uh, labels for himself because I've seen them change too many times, and I've seen him pull too many fast ones. He's one of these committed ideologues, and he is anti-religion. I'm sorry, he is, and he hangs out with vile bigots, hateful bigots. And, hmm. But basically, I, I am taking this stance now. If you tell me you are against religion, you are my enemy. We can be friends, friendly in, in, in a sort of neutral way, but you are my enemy. If you're anti-theology, you are my enemy. You're my child's enemy. You're also the enemy of reason. You're the enemy of civilization. You're the enemy of discourse. And you and, 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 and sane people should turn their backs on you and refuse to do business with you if you talk that way because the evidence doesn't back you up. And, that, and, and this attitude that people like McRae and all the others we've been talking about here, all, I make no exceptions, um, promote a, a culture of intellectual intolerance, intellectual stunting. Uh, they have atheists, scientific naturalists have visibly presided over a complete disintegration of the peer review system. These people came riding into town declaring victory like the Big Bang was theirs even though it wasn't, like quantum physics was theirs even though it wasn't, like all the major developments of the last 100 years were theirs and they weren't. They came in and appropriated it them for themselves and began bullying anybody who wouldn't be a scientific naturalist atheist with them. And they still are hideous bigots and bullies the vast majority of them, and certainly every single one I've encountered in this activist atheist community. I will make exceptions for diamonds in the rough, like Coach Red Pill and, and Keith Taylor, I think, and uh, Keith Tim Preston, who doesn't like me. Tim O'Neill at least seems to have some real honesty and a, commi a commitment to internet, uh, uh, you know, uh, intellectual integrity. Even so, even though he doesn't like me or us, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say that about him. Uh, 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 the academic agent's a great guy um, and reasonable and knows how to have a reasoned discourse. The vast majority of the online atheist activist community are hideous bullies, hideous ideologues. Some, most of them are, they're almost all cry bullies uh, and they are, they're all very good at playing victim all the time um, uh, when they're called on their shit and their behavior. And, and, and they're all prone to saying the most bigoted, stupid, and obnoxious things, and then um, not being willing to take it, take what, back what they get. So, I mean, this is interesting. Um, I, I really think that just if you care about science, and I do, I think one of the first things we need to do is chase these atheist ideologues out of the sciences, because not only are they bad at it, they actually make it harder for the rest of us to do or even understand science. Um, and that's not even getting into the religious aspect. That's simply getting into what they've done to science, which is namely ruin it and ruin millions of young minds, miseducating them on how science works. And by the way, one of the best examples that I've ever met is in fact King Crocodile. 
Um, so, okay, uh, everybody, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Tomorrow, Johan and Ross will be will be kicking around the secular talk guys for their pseudo scientific psycho babble on the demonic. And uh, we got everything. We're here every night, everybody. So please find us on Maker Support. Please find us on redpillreligion.com. Give us a like and a subscribe. God bless. Oh, and subscribe to everybody here's channel. God bless everybody. Mm -hmm.